Welcome to DockerCon. I hope that this week's event has been as successful for you as it has been for me. I am a founder and CEO of Code Envy. Uh, we are a silver sponsor of this year's conference. We also have an exhibitor booth on the exact opposite corner of this hall. And I'd like to talk to you a little bit about cloud development and the role Docker is going to play in that. Um, a little story. Uh, I've been in tech personally for 25 years and uh, studied computer science. I was a software engineer in the 90s. I had a great career at BEA, a technology career, and I rose very quickly through the ranks. Uh, eventually, I transitioned out of that and became product management, eventually business management. Uh, and my technology skills, while familiar, eroded. They had disappeared. And uh, I was climbing the corporate ladder. I was doing really well. I, I took executive positions at uh, publicly traded companies and became responsible for lots of interesting projects and teams. Uh, but in 2010, I got sick. Uh, and I was out of commission for nine months. I had a lot of cognitive abilities. Uh, don't do drugs, kids. Uh, all sorts of problems with that. But I eventually recovered. And when I recovered, I realized that I uh, missed the technology acumen that I had. I used to write books. I used to be frequently published. I'd go to conferences and speak very confidently about technology. And I was like, oh my gosh, I really miss this. I want to reacquire those skills. And so I sat down at my computer, and I just wanted to hack on some Java code. And uh, you know, back in the 90s, there was this popular sample application, the Pet Store app. And I wanted to use the world's most popular IDE, Eclipse, the world's most popular app server at the time, Tomcat, uh, and in Maven, and, and get this configured. And I spent two days, and I could not get this very basic application to configure and compile. And I was absolutely frustrated. Uh, it was a humiliating exercise um, you know, for someone to be so highly trained and highly skilled and, and not be able to make this happen. And, and it made sense. The technology over 10 years had, had just largely moved well beyond my understanding of it when I had quit uh, being hands-on. Uh, the programming languages had advanced, the nature of build systems had matured, dependency injection, de uh, dependency management, uh, package managers, everything had changed. And in that moment of frustration, I just sat there and I said, geez, you know, why doesn't this stuff just work? I should be able, it's well understood. Why can't I just click on a link and then with that link, it gives me a development environment that has all the tools installed in it with the source code so that I can compile it, debug it, and get on with my day here. And, and that very basic idea uh, led to this idea, I don't understand why anyone anywhere at any time can't contribute to a project, a software project with code, without having to install software. If you are an operations professional or a developer and you work in an environment uh, that is an enterprise or a regulated environment, the process by which you have to go to get your desktop or your server set up to become a development environment is imposing. You have to meet a variety of standards so that you can gain access to have the authority to write your first line of code. And even then, uh, it's often the time that the infosec or the operations professionals may impose restrictions on your freedom on which libraries you can use, which languages you want, and it's incredibly frustrating when what you want to do is to be innovative, you want to create. My company, Code Envy, we created an open source project called Eclipse Che two years ago, and it is a developer workspace server. And what it does is it provisions developer environments on servers automatically as a set of Docker containers. And then those Docker containers uh, serve up a browser-based IDE that you use um, in your browser, and it gives a professional coding experience uh, to write the code files that exist inside of the containers 
with a experience that is largely similar to IntelliJ um, uh, or a Visual Studio, but without having to install anything. And uh, Eclipse J is a project that's become uh, very popular very quickly. We have almost 100 contributors. There's 4,000 GitHub stars. It is actually a next generation Eclipse platform. And we have contributions from Docker and Red Hat, SAP, Samsung, Microsoft. So there's a lot of companies that are participating in this. So let me explain how it works. Uh, sorry, uh, here's the details. We've got uh, lots of great vendors. Uh, we get also on Che uh, some uh, uh, daily stats. And yesterday there were 40,000 usage hours. So lots of people spin up these Eclipse Chase servers and it's a shared system for doing development. And, and my company, we make a hosted version that you can sign up at CodeNVIO. We have almost um, uh, 500,000 users of CodeNVIO. Um, if you've heard of a company like Cloud9 IDE, which was bought by Amazon, we're, we're competitive to them. So how does it work? So the first thing is, is that if you're going to do development, you need a runtime. Um, and in this case, we use Docker containers. And you can provide a Docker file. You can have an image. Uh, it could be a composed syntax. And we take that. Um, and, and we prefer that it's a production runtime. And what we're going to do is we're going to dev mode it. And dev moding a production runtime is adding a debugger, um, adding in uh, language IntelliSense for autocomplete and symbol lookup, uh, injecting SSH, uh, adding a web terminal. So all the things that developers want on their environment so that they can write code as a professional. So you take those runtimes from production, these are containerized runtimes, and then we dev mode it uh, by activating it. So we create this workspace runtime, and then we install these agents. These agents get installed uh, transparently into the workspace. And then uh, once that happens, it is an active development environment just like you would have on localhost here. So you can now import your source code from version control, whether it's subversion or git. Uh, you do a git clone. The projects have types. So they could be a Maven project, a Gradle project, a PHP, um, a Python. And uh, these projects can come from a repository the same way uh, that you do a clone from anywhere. And then um, each workspace serves up its own browser-based IDE. So your workspace is given a URL. Uh, you access it, and then you, you're, the IDE is downloaded into the browser. Or you can use SSH or the RESTful APIs to connect uh, your desktop IDE into the workspace and use it there. Um, and then once you've done that, uh, there are ways to connect this to the rest of your tool chain. So you can actually provision workspaces from within issue management like Jira or from within CI systems like Jenkins when you have a failed job you want to investigate the job, hey, let's spin up a workspace, let's throw the code inside of it, let's get it compiled so that we can reproduce the same error and let a developer investigate it. Um, and since these are server-based workspaces, they're all running on shared infrastructure, you can collaborate with your team. Uh, so they have shared access, and Code Envy, the enterprise system on this, applies permissions, uh, resource management, user authentication and control, and scalability of this so that it feels local, but it is centrally controlled by IT and operations. Uh, architecturally, Che is a tripod. So the Che server itself runs as a set of Docker containers, and you just actually say Docker run Eclipse Che, and suddenly you have a Che server there. And then the Che server connects to the Docker daemon, and when you ask it for a workspace, um, it takes the recipe that you want, uh, the production images, and then it goes and creates more containers um, and then connects the browser and those containers directly. So it's a tripod relationship there. So with that, oh, we've got a very quick demo here. Why not do a live demo? I've got Che loaded. We're going to go super zoomed in. So I just did Docker run Eclipse Che. It's running on my desktop. Uh, we've got a real clever uh, installer for it that uses Docker. And I just want to create a Java workspace. So this is the runtime that I want. Uh, so I'm going to use a Java runtime that has Maven and Tomcat. And then I'm going to do a quick sample project, which is a Spring project. And I can uh, click Create on this. And uh, it's off to the races. It's creating the workspace runtime. So it's generating new containers. 
uh, for the developer. And then after that, uh, it's going to inject all the agents that I need to do the development. And in this case, it's Java. It knows it's Java, so it's going to put a Java language server in there that gives me uh, refactoring, autocomplete, a, J a JDB debugger connector for that so that you can do live debugging on that. And then after that, uh, since I asked for a sample project, it's going to go ahead and clone um, uh, the Spring Toolkit project from a public Git repo um, and, and set that up as a Maven project. Uh, it's going to take a second here. Uh, the, the internet's not been the best for me today. Uh, but there it goes. It's get the uh, workspace is running. Uh, we can see it there, and it's going ahead and doing the clone. And now the browser's connecting to that workspace. Uh, it's a JavaScript-based IDE. Uh, it's zoomed in pretty heavily here. But if I were to zoom out, you'll see that we've got a, a, a tree. Our source code is here. It knows that it's Java. So you can see that it's a package as opposed to folders. I can open up this file. Um, gives me here, it gives me Java code. I can hit control space, um, and control space gives me autocomplete, so it's IntelliSense without me having to ask for the IntelliSense on that. I've got a full uh, bash terminal here. I can run midnight commander, so I can do management of the files from within that. And, um, and then I can go ahead and just come in here. I've got some commands, which are build and run. And so uh, I'm going to go ahead and run that, and uh, actually, yeah, I ran it twice. Um, that's okay. The, the command is run. It sees that here's the Maven command, and it's basically injecting this uh, Maven command into my runtimes to compile that code and run it. Um, is it done? It's running through a whole bunch of stuff. But it even gives me a link. It's not done yet. But once that uh, it's done, uh, that project will have been fully compiled and it's running inside of your containers. And it gives you a preview URL so that you can test your application there as well. So in a matter of a couple of minutes, we started a workspace. We used some production runtimes. We dev moded it. And now I've got a full development environment ready to go. We'll wrap up here. Um, our installer and infrastructure is all Docker based. We've been using Docker for four years. Um, there's all sorts of sophistication that we do, but it basically provides really fantastic mutable infrastructure for us. Um, uh, and, and you can distribute these uh, things anywhere on any system. And on top of that, because it's open source, we've got an SDK built into it. <coughs> you can customize the entire system with extensions and plugins. Um, you can change the UX. You can change the stacks that you use. Um, and so you can make it into your own custom cloud IDE, and you can host this on your own um, with you, as your own product as well. And with that, uh, we're giving more sophisticated demos at our booth at CodeNV. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you guys get involved with the project and check it out. I'll hang out here and answer any questions. Uh, but have a great conference, and thanks, guys. <laughs>